couple of weeks ago, I looked at the a Tiny 841 on a stream. Now, it didn't go that well, but I did eventually get it working. But what I'm going to do in this video is just go through the steps you need to do to program it with the Arduino IDE. I came across the Tiny 841 after asking on Twitter about a microcontroller that supported being an I2C slave, and somebody pointed me to this. And it looks really good actually. It has two serial ports, it's pretty similar to an Atiny 85, and actually costs about the same too, so it's a really interesting looking chip. One thing with the 8041 is that they're not available in DIP packages, so if you want to breadboard with them, we're going to need an adapter. The cheapest one is something like this. It's actually a 16 pin adapter, so there is two spare spaces at the end, but that just means these two header pins won't do anything. But other than that, it works pretty well. There's no solder mask between the solder joints, so it does make it a little bit more difficult to solder, but I was able to hand solder this on the stream, so it should be possible for other people to do too. A less conventional option is to go over to fellow YouTuber Max Int's page and start commenting, asking when is he going to start selling these boards on Tindy. So this is a breakout adapter for an Atiny 44, but the pins are pretty much the same for an 841, so he was kind enough to send me some, so yeah, this should work fine too. Another option, which is similar to the first one because it's a 16-pin adapter, is these breakout um, boards for SMD adapters. So what you do is, and it'll be hard to do on camera, but I'll try anyways, you uh, place the chip, you push down and place the chip in between the pins, and that just happened to fall into place perfectly. So again, there is a gap on the left here, so if you wanted to use this to program a lot of boards, maybe 3D printing something and gluing it in there would work best. I haven't seen 14 pin ones available for cheaply. So this is like $2 delivered, so it's it's pretty good. So yeah, this is a, this is a great option too. For programming the board, I used an Arduino as ISP. I go through the process of setting this up in my Atiny85 Shield uh, video. That's using an Arduino Uno, but this is just using a Nano instead, but the pins are the exact same. I'll put some wiring diagrams in a minute that show how to connect it up to program it, but uh, other than that, the setup is the exact same. On the stream, I ran into problems where I couldn't program the board. That was because I didn't have this capacitor in. That's between reset and ground on the Nano. Once I put that in, I was able to program the board fine. I haven't had huge problems with the Arduino as ISP ever, but some people recommend that they're not that good of a programmer and to get something like this. So this is a cheap uh, ISP, USB ISP programmer or something like that. Um, when I try to use this one, the firmware that's on this one isn't compatible with what it needs to do because it needs to change the source clock speed and the firmware on the clones doesn't support that. These can be up upgraded or updated, but um, that I guess is for another video. Um, I haven't done that yet. So yeah, if you get one of these, you'll have to update it if you want to use it. So in this state, it can't be used. Here's how to connect up the Atiny841 to the Arduino Nano. You can also use an Uno or a Mega if you just use the exact same pins. If you already have an Atiny85 programming shield, you can just connect into the socket of the Atiny85 to get your programming pins. To be able to program the Atiny841 with the Arduino IDE, we need to install a new core. I'm using this one by Spence Conde called Atiny Core. So just when you're searching around for information on this, he used to do individual cores for the different boards and he has now made a universal one. So this is the most up to date one. All the readmes of the other ones have kind of links to this one anyways, so it should point you in the right direction. But all we need to do to get this is go to installation and here's a boards manager URL and we'll just add that to the Arduino IDE. 
So to add that in, it's the same as installing any other board, like an ESP8266 or whatever. So we just go to um, this additional boards manager and we can go to this multiple one, just go to a new line and uh, paste it in. You then go to tools, board, board manager, and then you can search for a tiny and here's the tiny core so you just install that after that's installed we'll now have new options in our board drop down menu so you'll see under a tiny core we'll see a tiny 441841 no bootloader and a tiny 441841 optiboot so the difference between these two is that optiboot will take up a little bit more memory but it will allow you to program the board using a standard USB to serial converter and I'll show you that in a little bit. The one with no bootloader means that you'll have to continue to reprogram the board using an ISP programmer. So the other options to pick is what chipset it is, so we're using an 841. The clock, the highest internal one it supports is 8 MHz, so stick with that. I didn't change anything else for the moment. Uh, port will be the serial port of your programmer. For me, it's my Arduino Nano, is COM port 3. And then finally, what I'll need to do is burn bootloader. So you have to do this burn bootloader option, even if you select the no bootloader, what it's actually doing is burning some fuses and things like that for these settings here. You also have to select a programmer and you'll see that the library has added some new ones, the ones with a tiny core at the end. The instructions in the library says to use these ones. I was having some problems on the stream using the a tiny core one to upload the bootloader, but it is working fine for me now. So try the Arduino as ISP one, but if you're having some issues, maybe swap over to the Arduino as ISP without the tiny core, but that only works for uploading the bootloader. It will not work for programming the board. So when you're ready, just click burn bootloader and it should upload the bootloader to the board. So now let's test out the board. I've added an LED to the sixth pin, which is Arduino IDE pin three. And I've also added a resistor up to um, up to the five volt line. So I think that's a 1K resistor. So we can do a blink using that. So we'll just go into the standard Arduino examples and grab a blink. And we will change LED built in to three. Once that's done, you should just be able to click upload because you've already have the settings and the correct COM port selected um, and it should work. And there you have it, a pink blinking LED. The ISP programmer is quite slow. Uh, definitely the USB to serial one is faster. So we can take a look at that now. But before we start programming it, first we need to burn the OptiBoot bootloader onto it. So again, in the board dropdown, just select the one with OptiBoot. You will have an example now for bootloader UART, and you have the choice of using serial 0 and serial 1. So we're going to use serial 0. This is important because this is the TX or X port that basically the Atiny is expecting to be programmed over. So if we go back to Spence Conde's page where he shows the pinout of it, you can see that TX0 and RX0 are on these pins here, so 12 and 11. The USB to serial adapter I'm using is this one here. You can buy these off AliExpress for like 50 cent delivered, so well worth picking up. We're only going to use uh, three pins from it. Um, ground, RXD, and TXD. I'm just going to keep using the power from the Nano for the moment, but you could power it off this, I guess, as well. So I've burnt the new bootloader and our blink sketch has gone away. So now we just need to connect up the USB to serial converter. So I'm just going to connect ground to ground, TX to RX, and RX to TX.
now back at the Arduino IDE, we need to change our port to be the programmer that we just plugged in. And we should just be able to click upload now. And now we're back to Blinky. This was maybe like 10 times faster to upload than using the ISP programmer. So if you're in a hurry, I definitely recommend this. And that's it for a quick look at how to program the Atini 841 with the Arduino IDE. I think this is a really cool chip and I'm looking forward to using it in some projects going forward. But if you like this kind of a video where we just take a look at the chip or like different aspects of it rather than it being embedded in a project, let me know in the comments below and maybe we can do more of these style ones. But as always, if you have any questions, please let me know. And other than that, I will talk to you next time. Bye bye.